right, so here we are. It's been about a month and a half. I fully have got to test this machine and I'm gonna tell you if it's worth it or not. So if you're new to this channel, my name is Brandon. I'm a chef here in Silicon Valley. And basically I make cooking videos, right? That's what I do. I'm a chef, but I also love espresso. The thing is, is I owned a Breville machine for about seven years before I decided to upgrade to the beginner level prosumer Bedzera, okay? I'm gonna tell you right out straight, this is such a good machine. If you have a lot of people in your house that you're pulling a lot of shots for, then you know, you're gonna wanna look at the dual boiler, okay? For me, I couldn't justify that. Even though I wanted it, I wanted it, but I can't justify it. And the reason is, is because it's just me and my wife who use this machine. And in all honesty, I drink my espresso straight up. No milk, no sugar, never, ever. My wife only adds milk sometimes and she only makes lattes and cappuccinos sometimes. So this does perfectly fine. With the PID control, you get an accurate temperature. And I tell you what, the one thing that I would recommend is the PID controller, okay? Because you need to make sure the temperature is maintained throughout that whole shot. And trust me, it's worth it. It's so worth it. So without further ado, let's get into some of these features, okay? The two things that I upgraded were the olive wood accents and then also I got the bottomless porter filter. And now, do you need that upgrade straight away? No. The one thing I will tell you, if you're gonna get this machine, don't worry about the one cup, two cup espresso pool. My wife wanted that in the beginning, but in all honesty, it's not really worth it because you wanna be the controller of the espresso. And so what I recommend instead is go on Amazon and grab yourself a scale with a timer, okay? And this works out great. And the reason why I like the bottom porta filter primarily is because I can put the espresso cup underneath without hitting the porta filter. So that is a plus. I basically got the tamping station, okay? I upgraded obviously to the Batzera tamper. I think this is important. Also the leveler, okay? Very important. I'm gonna pull a shot and then we're gonna, I'm gonna also talk about the machine as I go through and why I like this preferred to all the other ones. So let's get into it. So as we take a closer look at the machine, obviously Chrome, is extremely hard to keep nice and organized. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at a machine. I mean, I'm gonna be honest, some features that I love about this machine is this tray right here, this drip tray. It's easy to clean. The only thing is, is you have to manage this little uh, water spout, I would say, but it fits really nice in there. And then also one of the cells for me on this machine was the NSF, okay? As a chef, NSF means National Sanitation Foundation, and it means that you can put this in the dishwasher and it's just gonna last a really long time. This is the only machine that is certified NSF. You can put your cups here and they'll keep nice and warm. All right, and also this one has a big water tank too, which is dope. Of course, did I want it plumbed? Yes, I think plumbing for me is just so much better, and the reason I say that is because I don't like having to fill up the water tank. The thing is, is this machine does not have the option to be plumbed and the plumbed options are when you upgrade to a dual boiler. So you have to ask yourself if you're gonna use the dual boiler because can you justify the cost? And that's what I think you need to realize. This is the Mignon Silencio. The grinder is just as important as the machine, okay? So before I had the Breville grinder and I don't recommend that grinder for espresso. Maybe coffee, but not for espresso. And I'll tell you why in a little bit. This is the station that I use every single day. So I have a scale, tamp, leveler, and then I'm not gonna lie, I didn't wanna pay for it. So I made this. I got a cork from a wine bottle and four toothpicks. And this does a great job of just distributing the coffee properly. I also have a dosing cup. I have two of these and then, you know, a, where I dispose of my coffee pucks. So without further ado, let's pull a shot. So the coffee that I'm using in today's video is called the Boss Espresso. And this is from Barefoot Coffee Roasters. And listen, I really like this because it's local to me. This coffee comes out of Santa Clara, California, which is right down the street. I love their blends. I love their single origins, but we're going to make espresso today. So let's do it. First things first, I like to set the scale. Now, if you just wanna know about the machine and all that, then you're gonna to wanna to fast forward through this part, but I think this is an important part of the 
situation because I'm gonna show you how I pull a shot. So first things first, I go 18 grams of coffee. I always shoot for 18 grams and then I will add or subtract from there. We go to our grinder. This is just me being picky, but I really ha hate how cheaply this is made. And honestly, it's since I do single dose, it's really annoying to have to take off this lid. It's plastic and kind of cheaply made, but that's just me being picky. But what I do from here, boom, goes in, okay? And like I said, I like single dose. We'd use different beans, so that's why I only do single dose in there. But you can obviously fill it up if you want. The burrs on here are really easy to adjust, and this machine is super easy to clean. My favorite thing about it is it's super silent. It's not, it doesn't sound like a jet engine, but here we go. Okay, so with the bottom of this filter, I have this pad here. This is a little rubber pad. So that way I can hang this off of the table. If not, you won't be able to tamp or distribute. So very important, keep that in mind that the bottomless porta filter is not level, okay? The regular one is. So this is the one that comes with the machine. This one, you can tamp just like that. So that might be a little bit easier. The bottomless, remember, you have to go off of the table. It works out better that way. If you look at these, they're a little bit clumpy. It's not too bad. Thankfully, the Espresso grinder comes with a declumper, which is awesome. But what I like to do is I like to take this little contraption and I like to just poke these around a little bit. This makes a difference, right? So it avoids some of the tunneling that you might get. And listen, if you uh, are an expert barista or if you have any tips, I'm so receptive to feedback, it's not even funny. So I'm at the end of the table. What I like to do is I like to use my leveler. Okay, spin a couple times, boom. And then listen, the tamp, I've heard a lot of different things from different people. And honestly, I've heard 30 pounds of pressure. I've heard 10 pounds of pressure. I've heard 15. Well, guess what? What I realized is after pulling so many espresso shots is you, it depends on how fine your grains are. I think the pressure in the tamp is really important, but it's subjective. So look, boom, everything's clean, nice and packed, and we're gonna go. So usually what I do uh, before I pull a shot is I just run the water ever so gently, okay? So that way, um, you know, I know I'll get a clean pull. Okay, wipe that down. I like to use microfiber. I think microfiber is the best for this type of machine. Okay, so we put that on. Okay, it's nice and snug. Then what I, this is how I measure my shot. If I've already dialed in the coffee, then honestly, I'm just setting a timer to the side. I like to use a warm cup. If the, you haven't set the cup on top of the machine, you could just use the hot water here and let it sit for a minute. Continue to pull your shot. As you can tell, the machine is great, right? I can see it's at 89 degrees. This is 89 degrees um, Celsius. That's perfect. I wanna be in the 89 to 90 range, right? When I'm pulling the shot for this specific coffee. But I think what's really important is, is you have to be the judge, right? You have to be the one to make the decision on how you want your coffee and the type of beans and all that good stuff. Boom. So a little fast to start, but we're looking good. Nice and creamy. Look at that, beautiful. And I'm not starting the timer because I already know where this shot is gonna end up. Okay, beautiful. It's crazy, but look at that crema. Mm, I should have done it in a clear glass, but honestly, I have to admit, I love this machine. I really do. Usually um, this, co this coffee I already have dialed in and it's crazy because you can taste the difference. I think what's really important is you have to do it how you like it. Good example is I put 18 in and then I pull 42 out, okay? 42 grams of extraction. And the reason is, is because I'm an Americano type of guy, but I don't like too much water. I pull a little bit more, but not too much where the coffee can turn a different flavor, right? So that's what's really important. And you know, make your coffee how you wanna make it. The cleanup is really easy, so boom. Right, and then I always check the puck. Check the puck. When the puck is in a perfect circle, that you did a really good job. Then from there, I rinse this under the sink. But I think it's really important to always clean the machine after, purge it a little bit, right? Then make sure your puck filter is clean. It goes right back into its home, okay? And then that's what I love about this drip tray. It's NSF, so it won't deteriorate like your normal drip tray or like the one on my Breville did, right? Cause it's all plastic. I got this beautiful espresso now. This is how I drink my coffee. I just add a little bit more water to make it Americano. That's how I drink my coffee. How do you drink yours? Let me know in the comments. 
So I hope you liked my review of the Betzera machine. And I'm telling you, I think it's totally worth the upgrade. I absolutely love this machine. I'm glad I chose this one. So if you're on the market for a new machine, check this machine out. I got it from Whole Latte Love. Total investment, all said and done with the grinder and everything was a little over $2,000, but totally worth it, okay? I would highly recommend upgrading to the tamper and the leveler. That is something that is key when you're pulling espresso shots. So anyway, I hope you like this video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the post notification so you never miss a video when I post. Let's go.